That was a pretty song. Really, really right on time, too. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. You know, how many here tonight has had a hard time in your recovery? Maybe this week or maybe today. Come on. Amen. Come on. Amen. How many times have we gone through so much that, that we get that stinking thinking again? Mm -hmm. Amen. We all need to be honest tonight. I will tell you this, there's things that's going to come up in your recovery, but you need to learn your tools. You need to learn your steps, how to overcome those things that comes up. Because right. let me tell you this, it's going to come on you when everything else in the world is on your shoulders. There's going to be days where you might have got a ticket coming down the road. You might have had an argument with your job, a boss on your job. You even may have had an argument with your friend today. But, you know, we have to work our recovery, and we have to just lean on the understanding of God. Have God just, just trust in God to say, God, I'm learning today instead of Jamie's will. I'm going in your will, and I'm going to learn to structure myself under the care of you. Uh -oh. and, and then we realize that God touches us in a mighty way, don't yes, he? Yes, he does. Yes, sir. Let's go on and get into this because I've got some excellent good. Holy Spirit, feel scriptures at the end tonight. Aren't you all excited to hear them? All right. Well, I'm going to go seven things on how to stay clean and sober during a struggle of your recovery. The first one, and this is a very important one. You may say, Jamie, that makes no sense to me. I don't have nothing wrong with me, but just, just listen out and have an open mind tonight. It says, care for your mental health. I want to tell you something today, and the reason I say care for your mental health, a lot of times when we were in our addiction, what did we do? We medicated, self-medicated ourselves to try to avoid the problems up here, amen? Amen. amen? And we found out that we never fixed this up here, uh -huh. and that's why the addiction recovery part is not working because you have to fix both. Uh -huh. You have to know who you are and know what you're doing. You need to be solid because let's face it, most of us over the years, we have been living in a fog. Mm -hmm. Now that we have the, the toxins out of our body mm -hmm. and we're starting to think clearly, our heart is opened up, we, we are learning how to work our recovery. Mm -hmm. We're even learning how to love ourselves again. That's Ain't that right, y'all? Right. So we need to make sure that we take care of both. And, and later on down this list, you're going to see where it talks about dual diagnostic. A lot of people say, well, if I go talk to somebody, that means that I'm crazy. But if you don't talk to somebody and air your stuff out and have somebody to lean on, you are going to go crazy. Amen. Because, see, these human minds and these hearts and these bodies, they're not made to have the overload that we put in them. And so somewhere or another, if you don't take care of the mental part, you're going to have a mental explosion. Mm -hmm. So think about that. And i got a little piece right here that explains that. It says, most of us have used or drank for a long time. Mm -hmm. We can't think for ourselves when we were getting high. Wow, right. And we couldn't. I knew I had a loving wife at home, a loving family, loving friends, a loving church family. But none of that meant anything to me because I had put my hope and my trust into the drink or drug. Uh -huh. And I found out that the drinking drug did not care about me. Uh -huh. exactly. That it didn't care about what Jamie lost, the That's emotions, right. the depression that Jamie went through, That's the right. anxiety of trying to get the drug and keep up with the drug uh -huh. and trying to please this person, uh -huh. trying to get my wife off my back, to lie to her, trying to lie to my pastor, trying to lie to my friends, trying to tell my sponsors like I knew more than they did. Uh -huh. You know, it comes to a point where we do have to work on the mental part. Well, what can you do? You can get professional help. You can talk to a psychiatrist. You can talk to a friend. That's you can right. talk to a family member. Right. Somebody you need to talk to to get these emotions off of your heart and get them out of your mind. Somebody. Yes, sir. Because how many realize today after you've been clean for like a month, maybe three months, six months, you start to feel it better and you start to get that, that vibe like you like yourself. Right. Oh, I'm looking good in that mirror today. I was able to go buy some clothes today, and I'm feeling better about myself. Yeah. I, I, I made my mom smile today. I made a friend laugh today. I had somebody say, good job today. Yeah. So all this mental stuff and the mental thinking and the depression that comes with that will really fog your mind up. And so when you work on your addiction, you also need to work on the psych part of it. 
to make sure that you're in the right thinking, that you're going down the right road. And, and whether it's a trauma in your life that you carry it over in your adulthood, where there was something bad to happen to you or, or something that, that really uh, took you down and that's all you think about and it had consumed you, you need to get all that stuff out and you need to put good things in your mind. Uh -huh. You need to put constructive things in your mind uh -huh. so that you can work in your recovery on the addiction. That's right. Number two, work on your relationships with friends and family. Teach pastor. Now let's face it here tonight. Some of us has burnt some bridges and definitely closed some doors to contact. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Some of us in here, I pray none of us, but it probably is somebody that has a family member that does not want to have anything to do with us no more. Amen. It may be a friend that you disappointed or maybe the friend didn't understand why you did the things you did in your addiction. But I, this is why it's so important to get your family in your recovery. Now, my mom, you know, she didn't want a lot of people to know what was going on with me. And I'm just going to be honest tonight because I don't believe in holding back. I believe that whatever I can say to help somebody, and if that's what it does to help, then I've done my job. Right. But my mom wanted to keep things quiet. She didn't want people to look at me in a bad way. But, but I hate to say this, what my mom didn't realize, people had already started looking at me in a bad way. That's right. So at this point in time, one or two things. I can come out in the open, uh -huh. and I can air my laundry and have it done with, or if I could hide my head in the sand for the rest of my life and, and just ignore people. So I choose to come out. I choose to work on my relationships. I choose to ask forgiveness from my wife. I choose to prove myself to my wife. I even went sometimes and snuck off to the doctor and took a drug test and brought it back to just prove that I was clean there the first three or four months, just to show people that I was serious this time yeah. and that I'm not just blowing smoke where you want to see it. That's right. But we have to be honest and we have to work on our relationships. Mm -hmm. But be careful now. This is a touchy subject. Be careful on your relationships. As far as dating, courting, or however you say it today, See, what happens is we as recovering addicts or addicts just coming into the program, you're looking for something like a crutch to, to lift you up or to lean on. And you come out of recovery, you had not even got your life right, and now you're trying to move on in another relationship and on and on. Also, a marriage. Don't try to do everything you can to worry your wife to death. On oh, I'm not clean. I'm not. I'm not dirty today. I'm clean. Blah blah blah. Because the only thing that's going to work at the end of the day is yourself proving you're not clean. Uh -huh. That's by going to meetings. Right. That's getting in church. You're doing things totally different in your life. You're helping your family out. You're doing things you can for your friends. You're starting to build a, a bond together again. Mm -hmm. But but in this one right here, build relationships. It's mainly talking about. Make sure that you make things right with your family. Uh -huh. Sometimes in life, we won't be able to do that. But you can always go to God and say, God, please forgive me for what I've done. Lord, you know the true heart that I have now. And Lord, just, just forgive me. And the Lord will free you of that. See, sometimes we hold on to things and we ball them up and we hide them. And they come back to surface during our worst times through a sickness, through a loss of job, or, or, or not being able to pay your bills, all these things is going to resurface when everything else is coming upon you. It never fails. Number three, focus on healthy relationships. Healthy. Now, this is one that where you can look at. It says, watch who you are putting yourself around. A lot of times, we need to learn to live ourselves. Tell the truth. Tell the truth. See, a lot of us may have run to sports bars. We may have hung out with friends, and we may have cooked on the evenings, and we are so used to being in a cycle of hanging around the wrong people, the wrong things, and being at the wrong places. We got so used to that way of lifestyle, and so now we're trying to carry that over in our recovery, mm -hmm. and recovery means going forward, not going backwards. That's right. And when you start putting yourself in bad relationships with people, then you will find that you are going backwards and forward. That's right. And I truly believe here today that God has somebody for somebody in this world. Amen. I once talked to a guy. Thank you. Thank you. He was Thank married you. for years, but he was miserable. 
And he stemmed that off on that part of my addiction to where I was trying to find something to numb the pain. But he found a person that he believes that God has sent to him. And they've been together tight as glue ever since. They're good to each other. They love one another. They are in church. They're reading the Bible together. they got a new family coming up. And that's how recovery works if you take your time and work it. See, it's just like when we go out. We'll see something and want something so bad. And maybe we don't want to pay $79 for it when you can go online and get it for $39. Uh -huh. And it's like our addiction and our recovery. You take things for granted and you try to go the quick way when you could have took the long way and been a lot better off. Uh -huh. But we have to learn to tame these minds tame down. Okay. We need to learn to tame our wants down. Because yes. let's face it tonight. Most people that are addicted to alcohol and drugs, you have an addictive mind. One's not good enough, and 20 is not enough. You see where I'm coming from? You're not satisfied until you've got your whole pie. And we need to learn today to be satisfied with one piece of pie. Yes, sir. And whatever else comes is great, but we, we're satisfied with one thing. When we talk about healthy relationships, Let's go to the back right here. Let's start on number four. Learn how to do fun things. I want y'all to know here tonight that recovery is not as hard and boring than it seems. I live my life in recovery every day. I got 12 years and I wouldn't have it no other way. I love talking to people in recovery. I love talking to people on the phone that's going through a struggle of recovery. That's what I do because somebody helped me. Amen. I give all my credit to God. God is the reason I'm standing here. But God has used, amen? amen? Thank you. God has used and put people in my life to make my life a lot better. Yes, sir. And I've learned today that it's not me that has got this far, but it's God that works through me. Amen. But learn how to have fun. Most of us, some of us, I don't know a lot of hobbies. But I know I used to like to hunt and fish, which I still don't have time to do that, but that don't hurt to think about it. And, and, and I used to go all the time. But I found one, one thing today that I can still fish today. Amen. I can be fishermen of men. I can go out and fish for Jesus Christ and catch my catch, bring it to him, and let him do the cleaning. Amen. Once you start doing that and you start, hey, if you can do something as easy as going to a nursing home and say, let me volunteer to do something. That's right. What about at the meeting? You come in. Let me let me make the call for the night. Let me do something. You know, blah, blah, blah. You got to make life fun. Because, see, we've, we've been down that road of addiction. We've already been broken, destroyed. And we, we, we just feel like we have no hope. But when you start putting yourself out there, and you start giving a piece of your life here, a piece of your life there, and God sees you being motivated and, and want to use your life to help other people and seek to help addicts and alcoholics, uh -huh. you will find that recovery is a lot funner than what you thought. Yes, yes. It's no better feeling for me to talk to somebody and to see that person come through that door right there. Yes, sir. Oh, it's no better feeling for somebody to call me and then uh, six months later, show up here or call me back and say, hey, man, I got into rehab. I'm doing good. Amen. I got me a job. I'm back with my family. That's right. But, you know, I know God makes all avenues open up. Amen. So I'm saying it's not me, but I was willing to be used, right. to use myself Amen. to lead people Amen. to him. Amen. So start having fun in your life. Right. Go to the gym. Go outside like today, a beautiful day. Go outside and just sit in a chair and smell the fresh air. Amen. Enjoy the sunlight. Enjoy God's creation that he has formed all around us. Be a positive uh, motivator to your friends, yes. to, your, to, your, to your household family and your kids. And another thing about that, learning to have fun makes recovery a whole lot better. Yes, it does. Number five, five, find ways to cope if you get thrown off your schedule. Now, this is a good one right here because most of the times when people relapse, it, relapse it's going to be because of a bad thing uh -huh. that comes in your life and just wrecks your world. Oh, yeah. And you get thrown off your recovery. Maybe it's a sickness in your family. 
Maybe you're having to deal with a loved one that may be uh, sick and you're having to miss your meeting. Yeah. You're, you're having to take your time and just go and take care of everybody else and you put your life on hold. Uh -huh. But see, you need to realize here today that, that it's understandable for you to miss a meeting when you have sick loved ones or sick friends to take care of. Uh -huh. That is very understandable. But when you have, say for instance, you walked into your new job you've had for two months and you have based your whole future off of that new job. You're going to go buy this for yourself. You're going to pay somebody back with this check or you're going to get your license and get the car. But what happens when some comes up and just takes every dime you get every day? It's very discouraging. And we will go through times in our life, but you have to figure out how to overcome that. Because you've got to learn to live on life's terms, not your terms. Nobody said that life was going to be easy. Nobody. Nobody said that things was going to go perfect every day. And I pray that all of us have a good season. Amen. Amen. But I pray if you don't have a good season, that, that God will give you the strength to make it through that bad season. But do positive things. Volunteer at your group meeting. Get in church. Get in God's word. Get your family and friends in your recovery. Please, that's the biggest thing if you can do. If it's possible, invite your family. Come with these meetings. Say, hey, I know where an open meeting is where you can come pray. You can come sit with me. I see families need to know what you really go through in recovery. Once those families realize what you are doing, the hard work they see you doing, what you are learning, and, and what it means to be in recovery, they open their minds up. They start being a little bit lenient. They start trusting in you more because they see you trying to work your recovery to be a better person. Amen. All right, let's look right here at six. Know what to do if your old triggers reappear. And I don't know nobody's triggers in here, but you know your own triggers. That's right. That's you know right. what's going to set you off. Uh -huh. You know what person, if you're around, what you're going to do after you're around them about 20 minutes. Uh -huh. You know places that you can't take yourself because it is a trigger that if you go, you possibly are going to use because you have made a reservation to go. Yes, sir. Now, I'm not telling nobody to just stop your life, to stop going anywhere, stop being around your friends. That's not what I'm saying. But sometimes you need to get strong before you put yourself somewhere that you know that you can't handle. That's right. A lot of us, we get clean 30 days. We think we can handle any situation. Look, I accidentally, one time earlier in my coverage, I thought a wedding was simple, amen. And, and I got dressed up and I got invited to go to this wedding. And afterwards, guess what's going on? I'm standing in there. I see people starting around. The music comes on. You know what I did? I took myself out the picture. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I did what I was supposed to. I come to the wedding, but this part I've got to escape on. I've got to go. Uh -huh. Amen. So we have a choice of where we put ourselves. Uh -huh. We have a choice to how to react to the situation. Uh -huh. And it's the same way with an old friend that means well, but may not know that you're in recovery. Right. They may walk up to you and say, hey, I ain't seen you in a long time. You want to take a ride with me down here to the pool hall or go down here and we hang it for a while? And a split decision, you make that decision and you have uh, got out of your wheel and you have got back in the drugs wheel, you're back in the car, and now you're having those reservations. And it won't last for long. Some people can go months before they fall. But if you continue to put yourself in those bad situations, you're going to start seeing bad things happen That's again right. in your life. That's right. Number seven, the last one, consider a dual diagnostic program. You know, I'm not a, I, I'm a peer counselor. I've got my license and done all that stuff, but I'm not a psychologist. psychiatrist. Right. I can pray with you. I can tell you right from wrong, but you have, have got to have the mental capacity and the conscience to figure out right from wrong. Uh -huh. I can't do that. I can tell you what not to do, what to do, what's going to help you, but I can't determine what state of mind that you're in. That's right. That belongs to professionals. God, God, I know, and I take no credit from God, but God gives us two brains to go get help. God gives us a thinking that we can't, we can't, we can't live and continue to thinking 
We all know when something's wrong with us. Uh -huh. Nobody has to tell us. We know, but we're just afraid of stepping out and getting that professional help. Uh -huh. Never be ashamed of professional help. I had to get it. I went through a major depression. I had to go talk to a counselor. I had to go sit down to groups and talk and go to classes with other people and, um, and just sit around and, and talk about my problem. But I learned after doing that, it freed me up. It gave me an open mind to see things different. And it gave me a trust. It gave me an outlet to talk to somebody that I knew that had my best interest. So if you haven't ever tried it, get somebody that you trust. Talk to somebody, but be aware, and I'm going to specify this, be aware because a lot of people does not have your best interest. Right. A lot of people do not care about you, and they would love to see you fall and love to say, I told you so. Amen. That's right. And I pray today that nobody has that problem, that all of y'all have somebody that you can trust and go to. That's right. But I also pray that if you're not trying to get help and that you are seeking for help, that you will go get help. Now, tonight, we're going to go to what better scripture to talk about tonight and how the shepherd, the mighty shepherd, y'all all, all know that David, when he was a young lad, yep. that he was a shepherd, right. and he had a flock of sheep that he had to take care of. Mm -hmm. But what does a, 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 a shepherd do? They go ahead of the flock of the sheep, and they check the surroundings and check for dangers, and they, they look far off in the distance to make sure it's no animals that's going to attack those sheep. Right. So he, he's pretty much the protector. He's the guider of those sheep, and he keeps those sheep within each other to keep them safe. But I also want you to know that if the shepherd, David, did keep the sheep safe, then when one walked out of the circle, they would get attacked because they're by themselves. That's right. So we need to work, uh, remember tonight, and we will know who the shepherd is after this scripture right here, but I want you to know that we, I, you, we have to band together as brothers and sisters in this thing called recovery, we need to love on one another. Don't worry about, uh, you, you might say, well, this person don't know me. I'm not going to build a relationship. But I want you to tell you something. We all have gone down the road. Oh, yeah. We all know what it's like to be sick and addicted and lose everything in our life. Right. Even lose our dignity, right? Yeah. So we need to learn to love on one another here. And I'm talking about everybody here. Love on one another. Support one another. Carry one another when the other one can't walk. We are the life vest. And when we are hooked together and we've got our life jackets on, which is Jesus Christ, and we're in that circle in the ocean and we're all lost, but we're all together and we're all in tune to Jesus Christ when we are locked together. Amen. We can do nothing on our own. Life wasn't meant for you and I to go out alone. It was meant to have a shepherd, and that shepherd is Jesus Christ. Amen. Because he loves us. He cares for yes, us. But well, listen to right here in Psalm 23. It says, The Lord is my is, is the shepherd of his people. And this comes from the psalmist David. And only, only a shepherd could write this the way it's written. And that's why I believe David wrote this. He had knowledge of what it meant to, to take care of his flock and his sheep and to, to love and give them love and kindness care. Amen. And that's exactly what this is leading to, uh, how our shepherd, the Lord Jesus Christ, can lead us and direct us and to comfort us. So let's go on and start with it. Verse 1 of Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He make me, maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the parts of righteousness, paths of righteousness. And if you want to read this, go on and read it out loud because I know the Lord would love to hear this from everybody. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod, your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And, I mean, you anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness, the mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. Don't it feel good just to read that and, and to be comforted by Christ and to know today that, 
no matter what battle that you face here today, no matter how many years you've been strung out in drugs, but here you are tonight with a brand new life because Christ has given you life. Amen. Amen. Now you're walking that road. You have the Lord Jesus Christ that's guiding you down that road. He's going down that road and he's making a path for you to walk down and giving you safe and he's calming you. Amen. Amen. Praise God for that. Amen. What a wonderful God we serve today. In this scripture right here, where it's talking about everybody should know Jesus Christ, but I don't want to give it away yet. We're going to go to uh, Psalms uh, chapter 10, verse 27. And it goes on. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Amen? Amen. They follow me. They shall never perish, neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. Amen? Amen. Don't you want to be locked in like I'm talking about? That's right. But but not locked in by the strength of uh, humans, amen. Right. But we are locked in through the power of God. Amen. God has us locked in today. He has gone to the cross and sent his son Jesus to die at the cross. He has given you a new life, amen. So, so when you wake up this morning, you have a new life. There's nothing greater than the salvation that Jesus Christ has gave us. And you think about our lives. Think about how rugged that life was as an addiction. And think about them times when the devil comes to you and he says, you're going to use today. I'm going I'm to I'm tempt you. I'm going I'm to pick on you today until you go pick up and use again. But if you really believe Psalms 23 here today, you know you have a mighty shepherd that's walking with you and carrying you here today. Amen. Amen. I tell you all this. I preach the cross. I believe in the cross. And I believe only by the cross can we be saved through Jesus Christ. So we, we have to understand today, instead of that trigger coming and tempting you, we need to stand up and be bold and courageous today. We need to say, I'm not going to use today because I have that choice today through the Holy Spirit, the power of God. I'm not going to use today. I'm going to put it in His strength, not my strength, but I'm going to give it all to Him and let Him rule and, and reign on my life. That's what we have to do. Yes, sir. I want to tell you something here today. It may be somebody watching on Facebook. Maybe somebody here. I don't know, but I need to say this. And Lord knows that I'm not trying to be self-righteous up here. I just want somebody to have a piece of what God has given me. That, that, that piece of salvation that Jesus made himself an advocate for you. He goes before you. He pleads your case to the Father. And he says today to your father, he says, not guilty. Let them free. Let them go. And G.C., see, amen, I got got a whole lot right here to say real quick. See, I think about the fall of man all the way back to Genesis. You remember what God told the woman about the curse in the womb? Uh And I think about that act of sin that's going to flow all the way through mankind and womankind. But it's one thing. We could never please Jesus Christ on our best day. Never. If we lived a perfect life, it would never be good enough for God. Because the fall of the sin of man at the tree, amen? And you think about this. It had to be a sacrifice. God's grace, his most loving grace, to where our our redemption would be that place called hell. But God saw fit to send his son, Jesus Christ, to go to the cross of Calvary, to be a sacrifice for you and I, whoever call upon his name shall be saved. Amen. Amen. Tell yourself today, yes, I've got a past, but use that past to glorify God. Let God use you today. Somebody let him use you. Use your hard, broken life that addiction and Satan tried to destroy you. Turn it around and give God glory through that. Never look at yourself like a failure. God didn't look at you like a failure. He didn't look at me. He gave his own son for your failure. My failure. Anybody that will call upon his holy name will be saved. Amen. So never look at your life as gone. It's never gone. It's just begun. Your life has just begun if you have Christ as your cornerstone. Your main cornerstone. A house cannot stand without a cornerstone. So how can you stand in your life without Jesus, your cornerstone? 
Now, I just wanted to put that out there. I know a lot of people, they have their own belief. They have things they believe in. But I'm just telling you what my belief is. My belief is the Lord Jesus Christ, that he is Lord of my life. And I pray today that God will do a mighty conviction like no other. And maybe it's a heart out there today that wants to turn away from God. Maybe it's somebody here today that wants to walk away from your recovery. But I pray to God right now that they will do a work in your heart and bring you to the saving knowledge of what Jesus can do for you. Praise God for that. Praise God. That's what it's all about. Love, yeah. grace, and mercy. Yeah. And you are never too broken here tonight. And I mean this when I say this. A lot of people will tell you that I have stood up. I have fought for addicts. I have fought for alcoholics. I even fought for them in the church to make sure that they were treated respectfully. And they knew they had a home to come to to listen and worship the Lord of God. I want everybody to have the same life. I don't look at nobody in here for being no better than nobody else, but we are all the same in Christ's eyes. And when we do have somebody come through that door that's beaten and broken, never look down at them, but you pick them up. Never talk them to hell, but give them to Jesus, and Jesus can put them in heaven. Amen? See, so many people judge. So many people backbite. So many people say, well, this person don't deserve to come in here. This person can't even pay attention to you. But I know Jesus Christ, when you're talking about God's Word, Jesus is fixing them up. When you think they're gone and they're nodding out, Jesus is doing a mighty work in their life. Only Christ can do that. Man, woman, I, nobody in here has the power to save nobody. That's only the power of God. So I'm going to close this with prayer and we'll go to group. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Dear Father God, Lord, we just come to you today. And Lord, we just thank you for all the people that you have sent out here tonight. Lord, we don't know what's on the hearts and minds of everybody here, but we know that you know. And we know that you are working out a plan for somebody's life tonight. Lord, my heart goes out to this world for the people who are struggling with addiction, whether it's alcohol, addiction, or whatever's in their life is just pulling them down, Lord. I pray that a mighty work would done, be done by you, that you would show us a spiritual awakening, that your people would get their lives right so that you can be pleased, amen. And I pray that you would touch every soul here tonight, that you would guide them like the shepherd, that you would strengthen them, guide them, and show them what a good life is really about if they just trust in you. And Lord, we just thank you and we praise you and we we ask all this in Jesus' name. And the church says, Amen. Amen. So if you're new here tonight, the men will meet towards the back where that clock's at, and the women will meet in here. And I did turn the heat on for y'all women tonight. Yeah. Restroom. Yeah. <laughs>